I'd like to show you how I got my sample editing system set up using Max. After all, once I saw this in the SCSI manual, I just had to find out more. This is my usual setup. It's important to know about three key aspects to SCSI, which are address, termination and termination power. I'll go through each item. The Mac has an internal SCSI hard drive on which is usually System 7. The Mac's hardware is fixed at address 7. The system works best when the hard drive is set to address 6. Usually they are set to 0. The drive usually has termination 2. The Mac provides term power. Over now to the EPS. Its SCSI address is fixed internally at 3. It has termination but does not provide term power. When I have a CD-ROM in the chain, I set its SCSI address to 4, as it matches all the quick dial features as programmed in by Insonic in their CD-ROM libraries. I remove the termination. I set hard drives to SCSI address 2 and remove the termination, but set term power on. I'll tell you why I do that later. This is my usual system. I use this compact flash storage as a hard drive, which as you'd expect is silent and easy to use. For SCSI transfers, both MIDI connections are needed. I believe these send commands, whereas SCSI is usually used for the sample data. I use one of these. And this is my usual system, a Performer 200 and the MC disc. When I'm not doing any sample editing on the Mac, I disconnect it and replace it with an external terminator. Term power is now provided by the hard disk. I found leaving the Mac attached but not switched on seems to occasionally corrupt the data when transferring it onto the MC disk. When using these old computers for MIDI, it is generally accepted to use the OMS, which is really an all-encompassing MIDI driver. It can be a little confusing for new users, although it provides best MIDI performance. Here I have let my system know I have two devices connected. Each device has a few general parameters that can be set. Applications then reference these devices. It seems Sound Designer came in different versions. This one lost sampler support, so there is no way to transfer waves to the EPS. This seems best suited to drum loop editing. I've not tried to connect with SCSI. It seems this will only connect using MIDI, and again would seem best for drum loop editing. This seems to connect via SCSI and provides many modern features, but again seems best for drum loop editing. So that now takes me back to where I started, and having now looked at the alternatives, which is the best for sample editing? I have to recommend Alchemy. In use, it seems as if it was designed for the EPS from the ground up. I can only assume that guys at Alchemy work closely within Sonic, as the binding between the two systems seems so tight. It is very impressive. It has also been designed to work great on small computer screens too. From now on, think of the EPS and Alchemy as being one unit. Alchemy has been designed as the big sample editing environment. There is just so much it can do. Here is one tool I find useful. As I search through my vast collection of wave samples, it allows me to audition a sound, rename or delete it, and so on. It is simple and very useful. I guess today we will call it a sample manager. There's a few things needing to be done to set the system up, and one is to select a sampler from the list, and to tick this magic sync button which makes Alchemy and the EPS work as one unit. As silly as it may seem, this is one of my favourite screens. When first communicating with the EPS, Alchemy shows how instruments are laid out across the whole keyboard, each instrument, each layer and each wave sample with root key and span. Even better, a click and a drag and the keys can be reallocated. A bit of genius went on here. I'll quickly go through some sample editing. Briefly, here is a single Hammond note. Here I've highlighted the key click. I usually do some trimming here. On the right you'll see the two looping markers, shown right at the very end, so in this example I've already trimmed the wave. The best part is the crossfade looping. I can loop most wave samples using this tool alone. There are a few tricks that need to be done to get the crosswave to work the best. They are easy to figure out, so instead I'll show you one that works magic on a sample I've taken from a noisy farfisa organ. Making seamless loops can sometimes be very tricky. 
I'd like to show you one of my favourite tricks which is to remove any frequencies below the fundamental in a sample. I've found these unwanted tones which I usually may in some other rubbish tend to foul up the looping process as they are not harmonically related to the sound to be looped. So let's eliminate them. And here's how. Here is my squeaky C note which I've sampled myself from a cheesy Farfisa VIP 255 organ. Trim the duration as Alchemy can only handle less than about 32k's worth of data. Next select the wave and then press this button. After a few seconds the frequency spectrum for the wave pops up. I usually look for the highest frequency just below the fundamental of the sample. So in this example which is a C that's about 130 hertz so I would select something just below 130 say 110. Next choose select below from the menu. The little white boxes mean all those frequency components have now been selected. From the menu select clear. There we are, all done. Finally, just resynthesize using this button. You should now have a much cleaner tone with no low rumbles, which makes looping a lot easier. Do the same for high frequencies too. That eliminates a ton of noise. This is a superb trick. Here's another simple but effective tool. I use this a lot to give in sonic wave samples some brilliance which most seem to lack. When I first got the sampler the internet was just becoming useful. I found this site and downloaded a ton of files, then used a Giebler disk extractor. Yes, it took an age, but the sounds were still not what I was looking for. Then I got this CD-ROM from Doug White in Canada. It's full of insonic files for the EPS and the Mirage. An obvious choice for sounds would be the Insonic CD-ROM library. Although I am rather disappointed by these, many sounds need further editing, and many are not too bright in tone. Thankfully, most of the tweaks can be done using Alchemy and from the front panel buttons on the EPS. Then I got these, which represent good value, an interesting collection of sounds. I never realised just how well supported these Macs were, as I discovered TurboSynth, which is a modular sound generating program. Create sounds using an assortment of sources. Finally, export the wave you've created, which can then be transferred to the EPS. This is great for making trance waves. This app might look crude, but it really does the trick. It's a very clever program and ahead of its time. So now you know how to manipulate and edit wave samples in the EPS. Next we need a way to manage those files on the Mac. I eventually managed to locate EPSM which, is, which basically has two main jobs. It makes in sonic floppies using the Mac floppy drive, but for me the most useful is a SCSI file manager. However, I would suggest use EDM on a Windows machine for all floppy disk jobs as I know this works every time. EPSM is the application for file management and extraction of sounds from Insonic files. I tend to use this a lot. Here I can save and upload Insonic files to an Insonic formatted hard drive, read Insonic CD-ROMs and then save the files to the Mac's hard drive. This is so useful and I now tend to store all my sounds on the Mac. I soon realised sound quality of the EPS-16 wasn't that great. It's not CD quality, despite there being references to 44kHz sampling rates in the manual. Recently I found a comment online that describes the EPS quite well. It's dark and thick, in other words, bass heavy and not many highs. So what is a problem? I just had to investigate. I read in the manual when using the internal effects unit the sampling rate is always 30 kilohertz which gives a theoretical bandwidth of 15 kilohertz which in reality works out a little less. So let's go with 12 kilohertz which isn't all that bright. I then took a closer look at the output filter. Here is the basic scheme. This is all the magic number crunching in the EPS. It squirts out serial data into a DAC, which is a top quality job. This feeds an op-amp based analog filter, and this filter gives us clues as to what is going on. It's sad, I know, but I did a spy simulation of the actual circuit in Sonic Hughes, and here it is. Two things to note, the peak at the highs and the flat bass response. This is what I think in Sonic did to give the EPS better highs, to give a peak boost, which is a reasonable thing to do. 
Now the lows. Notice how even at 10 Hz the response is flat. From my experiments elsewhere, such a flat low frequency response is not such a great idea. It seems just to cause a lot of bass booming. It might have been better to roll off from maybe around 100 Hz. Notice from the graph the EPS is only down half a dB at 3 Hz. Now that is low. Anyway, from that I could see why the EPS sounds so heavy in the bass department and why the highs are not so high. OK, so why do you need to know this? Well, for many sounds I create, I use a high pass filter on the wave sample to cut the lows on a sample. This tends to work for me. I do it by ear and it clears up all those muddy bass tones. Then for the highs, depending on what type of sound it is, I boost the highs digitally. Yes, you've guessed it, I use alchemy. I also discovered the internal effects as a 44kHz reverb option, so on piano sounds I generally use that. So there we have it, my rather intense run through on how to get a really good sample editing system going, based on the EPS 16 Plus and a vintage Macintosh computer. Know that these old Macs have their problems. The compact Macs suffer from leaking capacitors which looks like this, while most have failing hard drives. Get those two issues fixed and in the main you'll be sorted. Now all this came about because Garth's in Sonic Editor was a total waste of time and money. So spend the money on a manual from Cintor and then get a Mac.